scrolling through job postings wondering if your dream tech job is just a dream? With tech giants tightening their budgets and constant headlines about mass layoffs, it feels like the doors to a 100k per year tech job are slamming shut. But I believe I have a strategy for unlocking those doors and giving you an edge against the job market competition. I'm Jack, and I cracked the code to landing a six-figure tech job during the last recession, and after recently being laid off, I'm here to do it again, but this time, I'm gonna show you how. In this video, I'm gonna cover my entire process for finding a niche in tech, learning to code, building a portfolio, and applying to jobs the right way so you can turn your dream job into a reality. If you already have coding experience and you're just looking to find your next job like I am, feel free to use the timestamps below to skip around to whichever section is relevant to you. But stick around because later I'll be talking about my secret weapon for finding jobs in tech that gives me an edge against everybody else on the job market. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do on your journey to land a 100k per year job in tech is to find your path. And it needs to match your interests, strengths, and career aspirations. The four paths are front end, back end, data, and AI slash ML. Each path offers their own unique blend of opportunities, so understanding what they are can help you make an informed decision about which path to go down. Front end development is where design meets technology, bringing visual designs to life during the web development process. As a front end developer, you'll focus on user interfaces and user experience, and you'll be using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create engaging interactive web apps. If you have an eye for design or creating something that users love, this may be the path for you. Back end development is the backbone of web applications, focusing on server, database, and application logic. It's all about how the system works behind the scenes, from database management to API integration. If you're fascinated by data management, server architecture, and making different pieces of software work together seamlessly, then backend development is where you could thrive. The main three roles in data are data analyst, data scientist, and data engineer. These people turn data into insights and actionable information, which drives the decision-making processes of the business. If you're analytical, enjoy working with numbers, or like uncovering trends or patterns in the data, a career in this field could be right up your alley. Then there's artificial intelligence and machine learning, which powers everything from recommendation systems to autonomous vehicles. These fields require strong foundations in mathematics, statistics, and programming. But if you're passionate about creating systems that can learn from data, solve complex problems, and potentially change the world, AI and ML could be a great career path. All right, now that you've chosen a path, it's time to learn how to code. Whether you prefer the structured environment of a college degree, the fast-paced setting of a boot camp, or the flexibility of self-directed learning, there is a path for everyone. The self-taught route is really ideal for those that thrive off independence and flexibility, with tons of resources available online, from tutorials and forums to open source projects and coding challenges, highly motivated learners can build a solid foundation in programming at their own pace. But this path requires a lot of discipline and continuous learning. Coding boot camps are short-term, intensive training programs designed to equip you with the skills you need for a tech career in a matter of months. They offer a blend of theoretical knowledge and practical experience, most of the time with a focus on industry standards and job readiness. Boot camps can be great if you're looking for a fast-paced, immersive environment that allows you to break into the tech industry very quickly. This is what I did to learn how to code and land a job in tech, and if you're interested in learning more about boot camps, check out these videos here. By getting a college degree in computer science or related field, you'd learn about the principles of computing, topics like algorithms and data structures, to things like software engineering and network security. This path is good for those who want a really deep understanding of the breadth of computer science topics available, and earn a credential that is recognized by employers pretty much worldwide. All right, so you're on the right path, you're learning to code, and hopefully by now you've racked up a few side projects. Time to start putting together a portfolio. A great portfolio is tangible proof of your technical skills, creativity, and problem-solving ability. And it allows employers to see the depth of your capabilities beyond what's on your resume. And in an industry where practical skills outweigh theoretical knowledge, a great portfolio can be the key to standing out in a crowded job market. To build a great portfolio, select your best projects, document your process, make it accessible, and keep it updated. For each project, include an overview, your role, the technologies used, the challenge faced, and the solution implemented. Post your portfolio on a platform like GitHub Pages, this is where my Mine is hosted or create a personal website and make sure it's easy to navigate and mobile friendly. Your projects should showcase skills that are most in demand for the roles that you're after. Here are some ideas to get you started. For web development, you can build a personal portfolio site, an e-commerce website with a shopping cart feature, or a responsive web app that uses APIs to fetch data. For data analysis, you could do a data visualization project using data from Kaggle or other public APIs. For machine learning, you could make a simple ML model that predicts stock prices, classifies images, or processes natural language, all hosted on a web app interface. Without actual industry experience, even if you have a really strong portfolio, this might might not immediately guarantee a job in tech, but it can open the door for internships. This is what I did after graduating from coding bootcamp, and it got me real world experience on my resume that was crucial for me landing my six figure data analyst job at VMware later down the line. Crafting a resume that stands out is crucial in the competitive tech job market. Your resume is usually the first impression a potential employer has on you, so make sure to get it right. A well structured resume is easy to read and highlights your most important skills and experiences. This will show your name, your contact information, and links to your GitHub, LinkedIn, or your 
portfolio. Next is your professional summary. It's a quick statement that highlights your professional background, your skills, and what you're looking for in your next role. Next, list your experience. Talk about your job history, focusing on achievements that are most relevant to the jobs that you're applying for. Use quantifiable metrics like increased sales by 25% to demonstrate your impact. Next is education. Include your highest level of education, certifications, and any relevant courses or boot camps. Next is the skills section. Highlight your technical skills like programming languages, tools, and frameworks, and soft skills like problem solving and communication. And an optional section is projects. Use bullet points to describe some important projects you've worked on, emphasizing your contributions and the technologies you used. Lots of companies use applicant tracking systems to screen candidates before their resumes are even seen by a real person. This is how you get through that initial filter. First is to use keywords. Include keywords and specific phrases from the job posting in your resume. Keep the formatting simple. Avoid tables, columns, and other complex formatting that could confuse the ATS. And use conventional section titles like work experience, skills, and education so the ATS can parse your resume correctly. Leveraging online tools can help you create a professional looking resume that is optimized for ATS. To build your resume, platforms like Canva, Resume.io, and Zeti offer customizable templates that can help you make a visually appealing resume. And ATS checker tools like JobScan and Top Resume allow you to compare your resume against the job description to make sure it's ATS friendly. This is so you don't get auto denied. All right, now that we have a resume, it's time to pull out the secret weapon for landing tech jobs. There are two main reasons why people struggle to get tech interviews. The first is that you will rarely receive any constructive feedback on your resume. And the second is that you don't have access to hiring managers. Hacker Relay fixes this. HackerRelay.com is my secret weapon for landing tech jobs and they're the sponsor of today's video. One of the most amazing features about Hacker Relay is their personalized resume feedback service. Here's how it works. You submit your resume and it gets reviewed by industry experts and real tech hiring managers who know what tech companies are looking for right now. You get feedback and actionable insights on how to improve your resume's content, layout, and ATS compatibility. And Hacker Relay goes beyond just resume advice by pairing you with a recruiter advocate. Your recruiter advocate will get to know your skills, job preferences, and career goals so they can align you with roles that are a perfect fit. You also get insider access to unadvertised job openings and get your resume directly in front of hiring managers, bypassing the traditional application system. And from finding jobs to preparing for your interview, your recruiter advocate will be with you every step of the way. To give you a better understanding of how Hacker Relay can transform your job search and give you an edge against the rest of the job market, here's a quick walk. First, go to hackerrelay.com and sign up with code jailbreak to get two free weeks of access. Now you can start to complete your profile. Select your preferred work setting, either remote, full-time, hybrid, or both. Select your years of experience, your location, and whether or not you need a visa sponsorship. Then you can set your minimum salary, we're going 100K, and describe your ideal job and leave your contact information. After this, you can upload your resume for a comprehensive review session. I got my resume reviewed and got feedback from a hiring manager at Microsoft, who then shared my resume with the rest of their team. You can also chat with your recruiter advocate. They'll discuss your career goals and help start the job matching process. A few days later, you start getting curated opportunities and insider insights into how to tailor your resume to the jobs you're applying to. Getting real resume feedback from the people doing the hiring and having tech jobs sourced for you. If there was ever an edge you could have against the competition right now, I think Hacker Relay is it. And again, you can sign up at hackerrelay.com using code jailbreak for two free weeks of personalized tech roles and resume feedback. All right, after meticulously building your resume, leveling up your skills, and building a killer portfolio, the next critical step in your career journey is actually applying to jobs. This is the phase where your preparation meets opportunity. Here's my proven method method to navigate through this phase and get noticed by potential employers. Keeping track of every job you applied to in your job search is crucial for remembering which jobs you applied to, which ones are still pending, and worse, potentially losing all of the job posting information when you actually do land an interview. This is why I created the Notion job tracking template. All right, right off the bat, I have a link to my last set of interview notes, my timeline goal for applications, a link to my resume, outreach template, and my elevator pitch. Scroll down just a bit and we have a database of all the jobs that I've applied to. The company names, job titles, tech stacks, application status, contacts, a link to the posting, and the date I applied, along with any notes on salary. This has saved me so many times from losing essential information about the jobs that I've applied to, so I know how to prepare for interviews and what to expect for salary negotiations. And make sure to click the link in the description if you want to get this template completely for free for yourself. Now that you have a place to track your job applications, leverage platforms like LinkedIn to find job opportunities, connect with industry professionals, and apply directly through the site's job portal. It can also be used to research company culture and values, which will be really helpful for tailoring applications or during interviews. Before you apply, make sure your LinkedIn is up to date with a clear headline, summary, and detailed experience section that highlights your achievements. You can also set up job alerts for companies or role that you're interested in to get notifications about new job openings. After you apply, reach out directly to individuals involved with the hiring process or other employees at the company. Craft personalized messages to hiring managers to express your interest in the roles and highlight how your skills align with the company's needs. These people are usually responsible for making the hiring decisions, and so they're usually the first person I try to reach out to. Sometimes it's hard to find who's actually hiring for the role, but you can still increase your chances of getting hired 
considered by reaching out to team members or other current employees. Most companies have a referral program, and so they'd be more than happy to put in a good word for you, especially because they'll get paid if you get hired. The tech interview process can be exciting and terrifying, but with preparation and a whole lot of practice, you can nail the phone screen and crush the technical interview. The first thing you need to do is write a clear elevator pitch that summarizes who you are, what you do, what you're looking for in your next tech role, and why you are the solution to the company's problem. Every phone screen interviewer will ask you to tell them a little bit about yourself, and a strong elevator pitch is key for passing this interview. Write a 45 second elevator pitch and then be prepared to talk about every single item on your resume from past experiences to specific projects. Also be ready to answer questions about the responsibilities of the role that are listed on the job posting. Do this and you'll be passed on to the technical interview almost every single time. After the phone screen, the real fun begins with coding interviews. These are the most challenging and most feared interviews in tech, but they get a lot less daunting if you have the right practice structure. Sharpen your programming skills with platforms like LeetCode, focusing on Python for its widespread use in coding interviews. I'd recommend starting with a few questions from each section of the top 150 interview questions on LeetCode, and then try to find questions that are specific to the company you're interviewing for. Next, you should practice your SQL abilities through exercises on sites like SQL Zoo. If you're interviewing for a role that has anything to do with data, this is likely something you'll be tested on. And make sure you know the proper flavor of SQL that you need to study, because the syntax can vary and you'll want to be fresh in the syntax that you'll be tested on. Prep for data take-home interviews and case study challenges by engaging with real data sets on Kaggle. If you want to be a data analyst, you're going to have to know how to load data into a notebook, how to perform an analysis, and how to uncover trends and outliers in the data. This is something they will test you on in the interviews. You also need to solidify your understanding of data structures and algorithms, as these are the building blocks to success in coding interviews. Use platforms like AlgoExport, or even consider taking an online course to refresh. And while this practice is super helpful, it doesn't help you get familiar with the actual interview process and the fear associated with doing your first few technical interviews. To get some exposure to this process, simulate a real interview setting using platforms like Prant, which offers peer-to-peer -peer mock coding interviews. This will help you get used to the pressure and format of actual interviews so you don't get nervous when the real one rolls around. Negotiation is the final critical phase of your job search journey. This is where your research, soft skills, and preparation converge to make sure you secure a position that meets your career goals and financial goals. Here's how you can win the negotiation. Getting to the negotiation table is already a sign of success, but it's also the point where you need to be strategic and very thoughtful. Familiarize yourself with the typical flow of offer discussions from the initial offer to the final acceptance. This includes knowing when to discuss salary, benefits, and other terms of employment, and recognizing when it's acceptable to push for more or just shut up and take the money. Before you enter negotiations, figure out a salary that aligns with your skills, experience, and the market rate for a position in your area. Tools like Glassdoor, Payscale, or LinkedIn Salary are really helpful for getting insights on what other people are getting paid. It's really important to have a salary range in mind, knowing your worth while being realistic about industry standards. Next, arm yourself with strategies to enhance your negotiating position. This can involve being super enthusiastic about the role while communicating your value, being prepared to ask for other benefits if the salary is non-negotiable, like additional vacation time, flexible working hours, professional development opportunities, or even a signing bonus. And make sure to practice your negotiation conversation with a friend or mentor to build up the confidence for that real conversation. By mastering the art of negotiation, you make sure your professional worth is recognized and rewarded. You can start this new job feeling positive and motivated. All right, congratulations on your new job. This is the exact strategy I'm using to land my next 100K per year tech job, and hopefully it helps you overcome a few obstacles on your way to getting hired. This process is hard, and I've made tons of mistakes. But if you want to learn my hard lessons the easy way, check out this video about the three things I wish I knew when I was learning to code and trying to land a job in tech. Make sure you pick up my Notion job tracking template in the description, and if you like this video, like and subscribe. Safe travels, and I'll see you next time.